What is up everyone? My name is Michael Pohl with Bay Area Aquatics and today we're going to be unboxing and setting up this Fluval AquaClear 110. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started with the unboxing. Uh, for those of you guys that don't know, I run AquaClears on most of my tanks. My two, or two of my 10 gallons, I don't run them. My beta tank and my cherry shrimp tank, I have sponge filters in there instead. But on my 10 gallon Cardinal Tetra tank, um, I've got an AquaClear 30. On my quarantine tank, I use an AquaClear 20. And then on my big 75 tank, I've got an AquaClear 110. And I bought this second one to go on there as well because I'm planning on fairly heavily stocking it. My original plan was to actually run the AquaClear 70 that was on my 37 gallon on this tank. But I found out after I bought the tank that the 70 actually isn't wide enough to fit on the actual tank itself without modifying the brace. And I wasn't super comfortable doing that. So I was watching for the sales and in my last video, I talked about how I do that. If you're interested in how to save money, go check the video out. It will be, I believe, up here. And uh, so yeah, I watched sales and I picked up a second AquaClear 110. Um, I'm happy with the one I've got so far. It's great, I'm happy with all my AquaClears. And uh, let's get into the unboxing. So right off the bat, you get your instruction manual that I don't need, and you get the AquaClear filter. And I know there's stuff that's gonna fall out of this box and this is probably not the best way to do it, but I don't have a table with me. So, there we go. And so you get this uh, packet of carbon. Um, I don't run carbon in my tanks, but I'm gonna throw this in a box because I do use it for my quarantine tank. Um, and so I just kind of pour it into my own media bag and do it that way. Um, and here's the filter. This is the AquaClear 110. Um, this thing's huge. It's like foot and a half long. Or not a foot and a half, but it's a good foot if not more. Um, it's big, it's like the size of my head. So it's definitely a, uh, a big boy filter for those big boy tanks. When you open up the lid like here, you get the, uh, the little over the top attachment and you have got the two intake tubes right here. This just pops in right there. You've got your bio media. Um, I'll fill this into my own media bag. I'm not a big fan of the bags that they've got. And then instead of running the carbon, I usually throw a second bag of media in so I have some extra media and just some extra space in general. And what I use is I personally um, have switched over to the Top Fin ceramic media. I really like it. It's a good price. Um, it's available locally. Um, I did a review on it, again, up in the corner here. And then you've got your media tray. And this has your sponge in it. And this is, I'm gonna it's stuck on something. There we go. Perfect. And this is definitely a big sponge, huge sponge. Um, the way I normally layer my filters is the sponge and then a piece of filter floss and then like I said, the two bags of media. Um, these sponges are a little bit thicker than what I like. In my other one, I left it this thickness, but I think I may end up cutting them in half just so I can get a little bit of extra space in the, uh, the hang on back filter. So basically the way these AquaClears work is you get water pumped up through here. It comes down here and comes actually down this little part here out into this reservoir that you can't really see. There's some little plastic tabs here that keep the sponge from sitting all the way on the bottom. And the water is forced up through here, up through your sponge, up through your biological media, and then it flows out into the tank. And that's basically how most hang on back filters work. Um, and that's how the AquaClear works. It's also got an adjustable flow rate. Most people know this, but it's just this little piece right here. Um, and it just moves where it, the tube's sitting on the motor so you might not get as much suction. And then the motor down here, you can twist and remove this and this is how you access your impeller if you're ever having impeller issues or something's clogged up in there or whatever it may be. I also like to run a pre-filter sponge on all of my filters. Um, this is a little Fluval Edge. Um, these are like two or three dollars at Petco and they're basically just a little sponge like this. And here's the intake tube and it just slides on top. And this just prevents sand and dust and food flakes and fry and whatever else from getting sucked into your hang on back filter and clogging up your hang on back filter. Um, my other one, you can see like right here, it's a big, um, that part right there. It's a huge sponge. Um, I think I may or may not take it off. I kind of like it, I ran it for a while, but it's kind of a pain to clean. Um, but it's definitely a big boy sponge for if you really want some extra surface area or you want a bigger surface or whatever it may be. Um, Aquarium Co-op recommended these. They sell them on their site. Um, I'll link to it down below in Amazon. Um, they're definitely a nice filter, but or a filter sponge, but you know, these are just a little easier, a little cheaper, um, and a little smaller in the tank. All right, and as far as setting up my media baskets, 
Like I said, I run the sponge here. This is a, a pre-cut piece of filter floss. I buy this by the sheet and just kind of cut it to size. Stick that right here on top of the sponge. And then this is the media that it came with, but again, it's in my own bag. I'm just gonna sit that right here on top. And then for good measure, again, my bag of top fin media, and this is just gonna sit on top of that. I gotta smooth all that out, but that's kind of hard to do holding it up on camera. So just like that, we've got our media basket full. You can see it from inside out. Like I said, I've got the sponge, I've got the polishing pad, the fluval, feet, uh, the fluval media, and then the top fin media. Uh, eventually I'll cycle through and you know replace it all. Um, but media is media and it works for me. Now what we go ahead and do is attach your intake to the little piece right here, which is gonna pop out. Not gonna do very well on camera, um, but it should be pretty much ready to go in the tank at that point. So I've gone ahead and removed the, uh, the glass lid and my aquarium light that normally sits right up here on top, just for the sake of making things easier to see. Now it's time to get the filter. One of the things is to make sure that you watch the cord so you don't get the cord wet at all. And this is gonna be a little bit on the tight side, but that's okay. And it'll come right over here and just sit on the back of the aquarium. And there's one piece that I'm just now realizing I forgot, and that is this piece. This piece sits in the back of the aquarium or on the back of the hang on back filter, and basically it levels out the filter so that it's sitting level versus leaning back like that. The other thing I like to do is make sure that it's equal from each end of the tank so that it's nice and center. If I remember right, these have to be about four inches. Yeah, so this one needs to move down just a tad more. Um, I run these glass lids, so I have to actually cut a plastic piece to fit, and I just like them to sit kind of nice and in the center. So right about there. That should be pretty close. Yeah, just a tad more. Next, you wanna make sure that you're priming your filter. And by priming your filter, I mean filling it up with water. If you run the filter dry without water in it, uh, you run the chance of burning up the motor and destroying your brand new filter. The other thing I forgot to do was, like I said, put the intake filter on the intake here. Next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is plug in your filter and then start pouring water into it. Um, I don't think you have to kind of pour it in once it's full, but I like to pour the water in just to make sure that it's primed and it's not gonna kind of like have trouble starting. So I like to just make sure that there's enough water in it. Uh, the other thing is sometimes if you push the adjustment to low, it does a little bit better job of kind of sucking it in and getting itself started. Just like that, the aqua clear is running. It's definitely on the noisy side right now. It's picking up. There we go. It gets much quieter once it's actually properly up and running and flowing. And just like that, all the noise disappears. All right, thanks for watching my probably overly long and overly talkative uh, unboxing and setup of my AquaClear 110. Let me know down in the comments below what hang on back filters do you guys run and what media do you put in them um, because that can vary a ton even with the same filter. Um, hot riding filters is great. I'm definitely curious on what you run and what size tank you run it on and what the stocking is. I, I'm always curious on, you know, people run a little bit of media, some people run a ton of media, some run one filter, some run like eight filters. Um, it just kind of depends. Right now I've got the two 110s and then a hang on, or and then a sponge filter with a power head on it. Um, and I plan on getting a ton more fish for this tank. So definitely planning on stocking it a little bit higher and uh, having that high turnover rate should help it quite a bit. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike it, you know what to do. And if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button or at least consider it and uh, hit that bell notification when you do so you get notified whenever I upload a video. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.